Because I'm going to achieve everything that I fucking want. Because I want it so bad I can taste it. And that's the problem between me. It's the difference between me and motherfuckers like you. <laughs> Fuck, it's a bit personal, mate. I don't think I deserve it. Don't be fucking mad. I, you know what? I came into this video having a look at your channel with all these reaction videos and I probably thought that. I probably did. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that, bro. But I see a few similarities here. Because I have made a brand and built a small YouTube empire and celebrity off of my personality. Mm, that's People it. People pissed off because, oh, he watches videos all day. I'm so angry at that. Oh my god, this is me, bro. You fucking got me, G. You got me. You got me big time. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Best call in the world, Tyrone. Best call I've ever heard. A big fuck you to any of the haters, man. So, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another reaction video. My name's Jacob. Um, in this video, I will be shifting my focus, you could say, um, from what I'd normally uh, bring to this channel as far as reaction videos and, and shifting it to a, a, a person, a personality, a story, you could say. Apparently a, a very um, inspirational and motivational uh, personal story of a, a fellow YouTuber. He's got a fair few more subscribers than me. But I've got a, uh, a friend of mine, a friend, follower, fan, definitely a friend, his name's Jacob, and he has come through the super chat on my uh, live streams. Um, he's put a lot of money through my live streams and I wanna say thank you so much. But there is one guy that he's, you know, being, being very, very determined, I'm not gonna lie, determined to get me to finally watch this guy and take in his message and possibly even get some inspiration for myself. Um, you know, my friend Jacob, who has watched Tyrone Magnus, I've never watched this guy in my life, uh, but I feel like he, well, he's definitely a reaction channel, a reaction channel. And I suppose my channel's at this point where people are coming to my, my, my channel and, and seeing my content, and if you're not going back in my video library far enough, you would probably think that I am a reaction channel, but I'm not. My name is Jacob McDonald, this is my personal YouTube channel. I do reaction videos. This guy Tyrone goes in hard, in fact I've been to his channel, I've checked out a couple of his videos, haven't watched any. But the amount of content that this guy creates is almost at the level that I do. So if nothing else guys, I have to give this man respect. I have to give this man's hustle the respect it deserves. I'm not sure what kind of edits he does, I'm not even sure what kind of life this guy lives. But what I am sure of is that this guy has a message, and it's a message that I'm meant to watch right now. There's two videos that I've been recommended. The first one is Don't Waste Your Talent. The second one is I Don't Deserve This. They're about 15 minutes long each. I will be making two separate videos. What I was gonna say is my channel's at, at this point, right, where I guess I could, I could, if I really wanted to, devote, you know, my entire YouTube energy tank every single day to creating as many reaction videos on as many different topics as I can. Yes, that'll bring in views. Yes, it'll bring in subscribers. But are they the right type of subscriber? Are they the type of subscriber that would still watch a personal vlog type video? Because that is the type of subscriber I want. But not all beggars can be choosers. And I'm not saying I'm a beggar. But I wouldn't mind getting to a million subscribers one day, just like this man has. He's obviously done something right. He's got a million subscribers, almost two. He's got a huge, huge fan base, I'm led to believe. Okay, first link, first link is, Tyro Magnus doesn't deserve anything he has. And the second video is, don't waste your talent. So I was correct, the first one is Tyro Magnus doesn't deserve anything he has. Now I, I'm not calling myself a hater. And I'm certainly not calling myself a reaction channel, but when I see a guy out there that that's all he does, literally, there's no personal shit, there's nothing, it's just reaction videos. I tend to think, okay, well, how did I feel when I was going all out, all reaction videos every single day? 
you get tired, you really do. You burn yourself out. I'm not sure if this guy's been through burnout. I'm sure he has. I'm sure he's had breaks. But I tend to think when I go to a channel, it's just reactions. I'm just like, that is not enough. That is not enough substance. It's not. You've got to have a story behind you. You've got to have some other type of content. Or, I suppose, you've got to just deserve what you've got. And, and, and Tyro Magnus effectively does deserve what he has. Although this video we're going to watch is him addressing other people probably coming in and saying you don't deserve what you've got. Now I don't know who this guy is, whether he's got, you know, whether he's had a career in, in something else before YouTube or whether he's just a random guy, whether he's single, got kids, I have no clue. I don't even know how old he is, don't know how tall he is, nothing like that. I. Get in here, y'all. I want to talk about something. I want to talk about something. Get on in here. So he's hosting. We need to talk. I'm going to fill you guys in on a few things. Oh my god, he's fucking serious. I'm going to fill you in on a lot of things, bro. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Well, I'm, I'm here at the right time. I'm here at the right time. Let's go. So get on in here so we can do this thing. Aye. Get on in here so we can do this thing. I'm doing it live because I want to say it now. Get on in here, yo. Come on. All right, I'm assuming that Come on. he's been reading some troll comments like I used to do. Come on. I've affected him in some kind of way, and he's like, he's like, fuck this. I'm going live now to address some shit. So, earlier today, I was checking my comments in my videos. Exactly. Like I always do. And it's very rare. As a matter of fact, I don't do it anymore. I don't respond to trolls in video anymore. How did I know that happened? Because I've been through the same kind of things, guys, except I never made this live response video. They must have cut him so fucking deep for him have to, well, not, not necessarily even cutting him deep, just frustrating him so much with the, the lack of, not only empathy, but lack of, lack of understanding. I'm not sure what comment he's referring to, but we're gonna find out. But, this troll in particular inspired I just want to actually say one thing. I, I actually had to stop reading my comments for six months. I had to stop reading them for six months because videos like this would have been made like on a day to day basis. I was getting I was getting troll comments. I mean everyone does, right? But I feel like now, seeing as I have never responded to any of those trolls, I feel like they've actually disappeared. And I feel like this comment section of this channel is actually one of the most positive comment sections on YouTube. And for that, I'm extremely proud. For me to say this, to do make this video, because I've heard this before, I've seen this before in the comments from time to time throughout my six plus years of being a YouTuber, and uh, that is that I don't deserve what I have. He doesn't deserve the Evo. He doesn't deserve the house. He doesn't deserve the clothes, the games, the game systems, whatever it is that I have because of my YouTube career that I don't deserve it. So let's take a road trip down memory lane of my life so you know where the fuck I came from so you understand who I am and why I definitely deserve every fucking thing that I've achieved in my life. A lot of you want to know more about me, so this is your video to know more about me to my loyal fans. Okay, I grew up poor as fuck, okay? Literally roaches crawling on me at night in my bed. Roach infested fucking projects, okay? Let me see here. When I got a little older, still in elementary school, I would say, you know, well, first of all, I never had the name brand shoes, okay? Never had the name brand clothes. So everybody else had the Nike, okay? Had the Pumas, whatever was in at that time, Nike, Puma, Adidas, Fila, whatever it was, I didn't have it, okay? As the, also, the clothes, 
I didn't have it. So I got made fun of all the time by all the ignorant motherfucking kids growing up. Fourth grade was when I got my first job. I was a paper boy, okay? And that's what allowed me to start getting things that I needed with my money. At that point, I could actually help my mom out with bills because of me getting a little bit of money. I could buy video games for myself. Now, there's one thing different from that story. I got my first job at 10 years old, and it was a paperboy job. I got my second job at 13 years old, working at a bakery. Got my third job at 14 years old, working in a, in actually the most, the busiest fucking kitchen in all of Christchurch, Lone Star Restaurant. Got my fourth job at 15, in the Christchurch Hospital, working in the kitchen. Fifth job at 16, in another kitchen, in a place called The Gondola. Um, sixth job at 17, working part-time in a retail store called Amazon. Then I left school and moved into full-time work, but you start, you, you, you get it, you, you know, you, I guess if you're not handed everything on that silver platter early on, it does. You're like, well, how am I going to get it? How am I going to get it? I'm not going to be a bully and steal it off people. I want to do it legally. I'm going to have to go and earn a bit of money. And if your parents are the type of parents who will support that, who will get you, look, if you want to work when you're 10, we will help you get a job when you're 10 if you really want to, they're going to let that, um, that attitude flourish within you, you know? Um, and I was certainly taught that by my dad. At that point, she actually started paying for half of the sneaker that we wanted. Me and my brother were both a uh, paper boy. The only other thing I was going to say is that I never actually, I never ever had to, as a kid anyway, certainly as a teenager, or before that, I never had to contribute to the bills. I never had to help my parents pay anything. They always, whatever they had to do, I don't know what they had to do, obviously worked very hard, but they always provided enough. And so this, yes, if I wanted anything extra, yes, I had what I needed, but if I wanted anything extra, if I wanted those, you know, brand name shoes, I was gonna have to save and I was gonna have to buy them myself, and that's exactly what I did. So, um we started getting the name brand sneakers then and the name brand clothes then, okay? We couldn't get everything, but we get, got a lot of it. I got to high school, all I think I wanted to ever be was a track star. I was the fastest kid in my school, well, one of them, at elementary, and um, I was the fastest kid in the school when I was on the track team in high school, okay? Somewhere along the way and around uh, senior, I found out through an article that there was this guy that was exposing all the Olympic athletes and exposing the track and field athletes, and he said every single one of them is on roids. Every single one of them. And I didn't want to be on them. So that cut my path to that because that was my dream. Respect. All I can say is respect. I kind of had a, a, a funny thought that you might say, right, I tried steroids, I tried that, didn't work, wasn't for me. But to hear that you had a mature mindset, even back then, to decide against that and actually give up your childhood dream of becoming a track star, I mean, that's not easy to give up. I'm still holding on to my childhood dreams and I'm 30. At that point in my life, that was my dream. I was still a paper boy at 18. Because they're supposed to give you this, like, college deposit fund type of thing when you were done being a paper boy and if you stayed until high school. It was this thing that they would pay out to you. Guess what? I ain't fucking get it because of some stupid technicality. Ah, oh, shit. So anyway, at that time, I was heavy in the game. Heavy. Very heavy in the game. Heavy into gaming. Been a paper boy for eight years. Misses out on... Uh, some tertiary education money. And so what's the next option? Went to college to become um, a video game developer. Started out with computer programming. Realized that I loved video games, but hated programming them. Similar to how I just felt with um, bodybuilding training and uh, gym training because <clears throat> Um, yeah, after thinking about it for eight years, I finally became a personal trainer earlier this year. Finally studied a six-month course, uh, and I realized that I loved training, but I hated training someone else. 
along the way, I had also built my body. And I decided, because I was getting so much attention from women, maybe I should get into modeling. So I tried that out for a second, didn't get very far because my mom ended up falling sick. She ended up um, developing kidney failure, okay? Because of me hating the computer programming, not really knowing what to do, my mom being sick, I didn't continue college. I only did two years. So then I bounced from job to job in mediocrity. That was a low point in my life. McDonald's, Wendy's, Caldor, worked at a where one, two warehouses, doing nothing, making mediocre pay. Um, and then a friend of mine told me she was waiting tables at Cracker Barrel and come up there because she was making really good money. Got went up there, got interviewed, got the job started. Started killing it, waiting tables. Um, and a woman named Kate Rados walked in there from MTV. She was at my table. She told me, you, your voice is incredible. I'd like you to come to um, New York and audition for Celebrity Deathmatch. And I'd always gotten compliments on my voice, but that was the first time I ran into Celebrity Deathmatch? Isn't that that... Is that not that wrestling program that they made they made the characters out of plasticine? <laughs> Look, if that is that program, I used to watch that back in the day, man. A professional that was interested in, you know, doing business with me. They need a they needed a voice. So I went up there, totally overshot the mark in my in my interview. I mean, you know, in the uh, audition. But she told me, I think you've got a lot of talent. I want you to take some lessons and I want you to get back to me. <sighs> Celebrity deathmatch, I have to look that up. It is. <laughs> it is. Oh god. Animated clay figures. <laughs> yeah. I remember. Being like a lot of people that didn't truly believe in themselves at the time, people told them, I didn't get back to her. Okay. Uh, my mother eventually passed away. She actually was there for me, for the there with me. She came up to New York with me today. She eventually passed away, and that was the point where um, I realized that I needed to make something of myself. I don't know what it was about her passing, but I realized I needed to make something of myself um, as far as her memory went. I didn't want her to pass and not have left the world something good. I didn't want to be that mediocre guy. All I can say, bro, is that um, we haven't heard anything about your dad yet, but I've had a fair few people come through my channel and, and talk about how they've lost parents. I have. In fact, I've had a, a lot of people talk about a lot of emotional things, but the one thing that comes to mind now is, is a sense of um, a responsibility for them because I put myself in that situation. Let's say my parents did pass away. Now, in previous years, I may not have even been able to handle that, but now I see it as a, re a real responsibility. You are the head of the family. You don't want their legacy to go in vain. You know, you want to live your life through them in a certain way, or at least, at least live your life in a way that you can remember them in the most positive light, you know. Um, whether that be fulfilling you know, their dreams for you, or whether that be just living your life and being the best person you can, and just, just knowing, just having faith that they are up there and they are watching, but that it's your time. You are the head of the family, it's your, it's your time now. You know. That's how I see it. And part of it was also pride. I didn't want to be the bum sitting on the porch telling tall tales about what I used to do or what I could have, should have, would have type of thing when I was, you know, when I'm like 80 years old, your life has passed you and you can't do shit with it. This is basically exactly how I was feeling, probably at pretty much this exact date. September 9th, 2018. I was at a point, I was at a point where I wasn't, I wasn't actually, I wasn't prepared to live with regret anymore. I wasn't. And I refused. I absolutely refused 
wholeheartedly to be that guy at 80 years of age living with regret and only being able to tell these tall fucking tales you know of when you could have done something you could have been great you would have been great but you didn't you weren't okay and you've got to live with that so as i still have my youth all right i would have been 28 or 27 at that point i'm 30 now i've still got my youth i do feel like i am coming into my prime and i do feel like anything i want to achieve any of these things that i want to have actually done not just talk about i'm gonna fucking do it you gotta back yourself you know what i mean so at that time that's when i got into sales okay i previously worked for pepsi after cracker barrel i got into sales too 2012 i was 22 and i started working for holden and i did nine months in sales and it was my first inkling that I could actually earn some decent money. You know, I could actually put some money away. But it was also my first inkling that money doesn't necessarily make you happy. I was doing 55, 60 hours a week there. I was making coin, but I hated selling. I hated selling. I'm too nice. I see a guy walk in, see the gleam in his eye, he looks at that car, he's like, right, I want that one. Sweet, 40 grand, yep, you got a job, yep, had it for six months. How old are you, 19? Got any savings? No. All right, well, let's tick you up for 40 grand. You know, I, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I, cu I couldn't feel good about it. Um, and so I left after nine months. But what it gave me was an experience in sales. It taught me that, you know, there is money out there to be earned. And it gave me an opportunity to mix with a lot of different people. Um, and, and I guess take from them what I could. See, I liked the talking, but I hated the selling. That's just me. Worked all the time there. Was actually I, I was one of the best merchandisers. I was doing my thing. I was the guy doing you know building the displays and all that type of thing. Doing my thing. Loved it. Worked it to the point where I had it like a system. I was one of the best ones, and it, I, I made a lot of good money with them. I loved Pepsi, but my body started to break down because you know, you're the workhorse. So after my mom passed away, I learned about car sales. Oh wow. $50,000 to $75,000 a year. That's exactly right, my friend. But what you've got, you've got a, uh, I don't know where the story's gonna go. In fact, I'm, I'm fucking loving it. But you've got a high ticket, you've got a high priced item, right? So that means that you're gonna make more on each sale. You're not gonna make as many sales, but the, the amount you make on that sale is gonna be more. In fact, it was a minimum, a minimum $150. The most I ever made on a deal this is on top of your base salary, which isn't high. In fact, his base salary probably would have been 25, 30 grand, which doesn't seem like much, but when you do get the commissions on top, the best commission I ever got, I sold, I sold a, 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 I sold a, a truck for $72,000. It cost the business 60. That means there's a $12,000 profit. I got 12.5% of that profit. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's about $1,500. And to think that you get paid your commissions out monthly, I might have I might have sold 15 cars that month. You know, what's that? An average of average of two, three hundred bucks per car, except for that big one. So you know, some months, some months I might have got shit. Some months I might have got 10 grand, maximum, maximum 10 grand, which means you cap yourself out at what 100 grand, 110 grand. You're working your ass off for it. Like you said, your body is breaking down. Is it worth it? Got into car sales, knowing how much money I could make. I read every book I could on car sales. Oh, by the way, if you're not passionate about your product, you will not last. And it didn't matter, it didn't matter how many cars I test drove, it didn't matter how many cars I read about, I was not passionate about cars. And I realized that, and I lasted nine months. I watched every video I could, I listened to CDs, tapes, everything I could. Went to sales, seminars, all that. And I was there at 9 a.m., left at 9, 10, 11 p.m. at night every fucking day of the two years that I was fucking there. Fuck that. Okay? That business eventually can destroy a person depending on what type of car sales you're in. I was in a store that was notorious for the stress and the bullshit that they dealt to their employees. I had a friend that had a friend that worked at ADT Security. And 
Okay. She had him call me, <laughs> and he talked to me about it. He was one of their best salespeople. He talked to me. He liked me. I got the interview. They loved me. I got the job. I was at ADT every fucking day working my ass off. Okay? Okay. When I really put it in the full throttle, I didn't have time at all. Okay? You might have an appointment at 8 a.m. And I didn't finish till 10 a.m. Bringing in nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a fucking week because I was working my fucking ass off. You understand that? To the point where I was considered for manager several times. But I didn't want it because I had a girlfriend at that time that worked with me that was considered for the same thing. And I st we both started to hear everything that you had to deal with and how upper management was and the pressure that they put on you. And I was very close to one of the managers in there. And I was like, nah, no, no. Because I had actually gotten the interview and another guy from another office got the job. And I was fucking pissed. And it's funny how life works out. Sometimes you don't get what you think you want. But I didn't get it. And once I started to talk to all of them and hear, I was just like, fuck that. Thank God. At the same time, I had decided to pursue my modeling career again. I spoke with an agent. She said, you need to learn how to act because... You're gonna make me more money and more money for yourself. So you're gonna to need to take some acting lessons. I was like, uh, okay, fine. Took around six acting acting lessons, one a week, did my monologue for her. She smiled like a proud grandparent. And she told me, I want you to compete at IMTA because I think you're good enough to beat everyone. And I was like, thinking to myself, how the fuck could I be that good? I've only had six acting lessons. How could I be good enough to be hundreds of other actors? And some of them have been acting for months, years, weeks earlier than me. That is a limited mindset. It's a limiting mindset, mate. Limiting beliefs. Um, you've just got to back yourself. You have to believe in yourself. But until you've been fulfilled with that courage and energy that he is being fulfilled with by his tutors and by the people that are telling him he can do it, He's still not believing it, but for some reason something clicked and he did believe in himself. So let's keep going. At the time, my confidence was boosting because it was do or die. I was growing on YouTube. I was living YouTube. YouTube videos every single day because I wanted to run my own life. I did not want to be ruled by someone else have a boss hovering over my fucking head. So while I was working all these fucking hours at YouTube, I mean at, at, at ADT, then YouTube took over. Less and less for ADT, more and more for YouTube because I saw the actual potential of YouTube and being my own boss. So when I wasn't living ADT, I was living YouTube Every single day. Tyrone, I'm going to stop you right there and tell you you're not the fucking only one, bro. You're not the only one. I was doing 12-hour shifts in probably the most mentally draining type of work you can do. This is disability support work. Intellectually disabled clients. Guys that could run around, but intellectually they weren't there. So it's draining work. It's 12-hour shifts. And I was doing it every single day. And it you got no idea. You have, you have no idea the kind of hustle I had to have to continue my YouTube schedule at, at least one, one video a day throughout a period of time there it was like two videos a day continue to work full time continue to try and be a dad continue to try and run a business continue to try and pay the continue to try and train I mean it all got just way way too much but you do it you do it because it's that, it's that crunch time it's like if you, if you don't do it no one else is you're at a point right you're at a point where if you don't do this, if you don't, if you don't, if you, if you don't put in the sweat equity, is what they call it. You know, a guy Greg Plitt, uh, rest in peace. He's a huge inspiration to me. I don't know where Tyrone's got his inspiration from, but I've got it from guys like Greg Plitt. And he talked about, and he talked about something called sweat equity, which is work that 
you, only you are ever going to be pre pre prepared to put in, right? So I put sweat equity in when I was trying to build my business. You know, whether it was my business, whether it was before I bought my first um, real estate property, my, and my second real estate property, I was doing the sweat equity. I was doing the work on work behind the scenes. I was doing my research, looking at <sighs> podcasts, listening to podcasts, looking at uh, properties. You know for nights after night after night. I was going to work, coming home, doing that. You find the time, you prioritize your time. You have to, because it's sweat equity. It's work that needs to be done to get you where you want to get, but no one else is going to do it. No one else gives a fuck, okay, about your editing. No one cares. You've got to do it. And you've got to find a way to do it, day after day after day. were caused problems with me and my girlfriend. She wanted more time with me. What I was going to say is that the, the amount of, okay, the, the hustle that I went through to work that full-time job and create the amount of YouTube videos I did over probably a two-year two period from 2017 to 2019, I was taking my computer to work every day. Every single bit of downtime I was on that computer, I'd take it home, I'd get it out when I got home, I'd get back on it, I'd eat. In fact, I'd forget to eat. In fact, I forgot to train. <laughs> you know, it was a life of coffee work and YouTube. Coffee, work and YouTube. And I'll tell you what, you take the work part out of it and you've still got two of my favorite things. Coffee and YouTube. And that's where we're at right now. She wanted more time with me. When can we talk? When can we be together? But I was a man on a mission. And if any of you men know, when you're a man on a mission, you ain't gonna finish until your mission is complete. Certainly feel you on that one. So all day, all night, that's the reason why those of you that saw me on YouTube in the beginning, there were videos all day long and you still see that four, five, six videos a day because I eat, sleep and live my career. Okay. And when I'm not on YouTube, I'm on Twitch. So you're saying this is a career, uh, Tyrone. You're saying that reaction videos and the creation of reaction videos and reacting to things for an audience is considered a career. Now you could give me 10 million subscribers and I could be creating 10 reaction videos every single day for the next 10 years straight and I still don't think that is a career. It's a passion, but is it a career? Is it a career? Are you a YouTuber when you only do reaction videos? Does he only do reaction videos? I guess I'm going to have to find out. But I tend to think you've got to have at least something else. And when I'm not on Twitch, I'm at the gym building my body, keeping myself in shape, eating right. When I'm not there, I'm filming London or doing voiceovers for somebody. So when you fucking tell me that I don't deserve what I fucking have, you can kiss my fucking black ass. Because I deserve everything that I've achieved and more. He just said doing videos for London or voiceovers. So it's not just YouTube. I, I, I take that back. And I'm going to get more because I'm going to achieve everything that I fucking want. Because I want it so bad I can taste it. And that's the problem between me. It's the difference between me and motherfuckers like you. <laughs> Fuck, it's a bit personal, mate. I don't think I deserve it. Don't be fucking mad. I, you know what? I came into this video having a look at your channel with all these reaction videos, and I probably thought that. I probably did. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that, bro. But I see a few similarities here. Because I have made a brand and built a small YouTube empire and celebrity off of my personality. Mm. That's People it. pissed off because, oh, he watches videos all day. I'm so angry at that. Oh my god, this is me, bro. You fucking got me, G. You got me. You got me big time. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Best call in the world, Tyrone. Best call I've ever heard. A big fuck you to any of the haters man okay <laughs> people love my personality enough to watch me 
Watch video! And it's an unbelievable concept, mate. And it's a concept I'm still getting used to with my own channel, you know. It, but it is. It's your personality, mate. It's your personality. And that's it. And I've never even watched one of your reaction videos. And I probably never will. But you'll go to a movie critics channel who gets paid to watch a movie and give their opinion. So the difference between me and the movie critic is that I'm actually watching it. You get to see me watch it and I give you my opinion. You don't get to see the movie review or watch their movie. I probably should have watched this back when it first came out. It would have given me a, would have given me a, would have helped me through some hard times, I'm not gonna lie, some, some doubtful times. To watch this shit back in September of 2018, when I was grinding like a motherfucker, day after day after day, at work, doing the sweat equity, getting these videos done in my spare time. But then in saying that, if I had have seen something like this, it may have, it may have sent me the other way. You know, I might have seen this and been like, I can never do that. You know, with that doubtful mindset. I just had to be on my own path, a man on a mission, and no one was going to stop me. But they give their opinion, all of a sudden they're legit. Fuck you. Okay? I also do gaming, unboxings, I've helped people with their lives with the Q&A. Do you know how many times I've had people write me telling me that I saved their fucking marriage, their relationship, I'm the reason why they lost weight, why they're healthy now, I'm the reason why they didn't commit suicide? I've got that one a fair few times, bro. Fuck you. Mm. I deserve everything that I got. And anybody got a problem with it can kiss my motherfucking ass. Woo! Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. Ten million subscribers. Woo! Okay. Well, all right then, guys. That was uh, that was Tyrone Magnus. Um my reaction to Tyrone Magnus and his his story on why he does deserve everything he's got. This is my reaction to you. I have no idea if you're going to see it. You probably do, you're probably like me and you can't stand watching other reaction videos. And that's why I'm not going to watch any of yours. But I do have one other video to watch. And it's called Don't Waste Your Talent. Don't Waste Your Talent. Now that sounds interesting. Going off of what we just heard, this video is going to be a cracker. It's 14 minutes long. Uh, I'm going to finish this one here. I'm going to see you back here shortly to have a look at that one. And I suppose I'm going to... I've actually taken a lot from that video. I have. I'm not going to unpack it here. Uh, but you guys, if you've watched this whole video, you'll know. You'll know what parts of that I've taken and what parts I haven't. And, uh, well, I hope you guys come back for the next one. So, Tyrone Magnus, 2 million subscribers being a reaction channel. Does he deserve what he has? Apparently so. I've got a story like that. Everyone's got a story. Maybe I should... Maybe I should tell mine. I've probably thought that I could make a video like that, but I've never felt like I had to. And so with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace out.